Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and a new video. You're probably gonna hear Chris because he's out there clearing away a wire pallet and he's got his microphone on. So an unexpected video, I'm afraid. Not something that we was looking at doing, but unfortunately, it, it is what it is. The car had, be, had quite a bad life. I just realised you had your mic on, you was out was there. So we probably heard you pro probably heard you puffing away out there. So yeah, unfortunately the gearbox in this is toast. We are quite confident that we've got a gearbox for it and we don't want this one sitting around. It is all done now. We've done that engine. We've done quite a lot of little jobs to it. We've had it all cleaned up and pretty much we was there with it. But unfortunately, of course, it is the gearbox is toast. So we are just going to crack straight on with it, guys. We want to get this one turned around. So we're going to get it up in the air, get, get that gearbox out of it, have a look at the state of the clutch. I don't know quite what's broken up there. I'm convinced it's gearbox because this morning, even when you bought this in, it actually got stuck. Yeah. It, 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 yeah. it jammed. It jammed in reverse. Right, okie dokie. Anyway, let's crack on with it. Just five minutes of stripping there and it actually become apparent that it's been out before someone's been in here before you've got i mean you, you're not going to see a great deal but there is a fair bit of oil down there as well but we did have the vacuum pump off so we did expect a little bit of residue to be sitting in there or it's got a crack in it we'll have a look when we get it out but just stripping a few bits out nothing was actually put back how it should be so to speak so this wiring loom here, you can see it's all got these little push clips in it and none of them were pushed home. This, this here should all be clipped in. There's all clips here. None of it was clipped in. It's all floating. So yeah, I'm afraid uh, it's not quite 100%, but of course, when we put it back together, it will be right. Just clearing everything out of the way. Very, very boring stuff here. Battery tray all of the bits and pieces remove them out of the way just so that when the gearbox comes out nothing's in the way all the wheel bolts are loose got it just sitting on the ramp so ready to get those wheels off i'm going to continue removing everything that we need from under here and once that's done we can then move down to the underside Definitely big problems there. I've just taken that drain plug out and that oil should not be grey like that. Yeah, very, very strange. And actually, hopefully guys, you can see all the iron filings in that. Not good at all. Yeah, very, very, there's a lot of water coming out there as well. See all the water dropping out of it. I'm not sure how water's gotten into the gearbox, but that's certainly water dripping out of it. Right, let's get that drained off, get the shafts pulled out. Right, so what I've done there was actually stripped quite a lot without the time lapse because it is run of the mill stuff that you have to do to remove a gearbox. And I didn't want to put you all through the torture of like a good six minutes of time lapse because that's what it would be all the way through a video. I removed the shafts. Chris actually come and split the bottom ball joints with me. It's a two-man job. 
I've undone all the bell housing bolts. The top bolts are undone. We've got a stand under the engine now and a stand under the gearbox. So Chris is probably going to let the gearbox stand down. I'm going to give it a bit of a wiggle, but we can see it's coming away already. So should be quite straightforward. In fact, it'll probably just fall out. So definitely, definitely gearbox because that clutch, let's take these gloves off. Chris is under there shining it, so. They don't come any more new than that, do they? Oh, brand new LUK. And you can see in there how, thick it, wheel, how it? thick it is. That's a new flywheel. Yeah, I think it is. Well. We got the new one, mate, didn't we? It is, yeah. It is gearbox related, so. I mean, should we have that off and inspect it, or do you mm. think it looks fine? What's that scratching man now? Yes, a bit of a wear mark, isn't it? That shouldn't be scratching, though, should it? It's interesting, isn't it? Same one there, isn't there? Yeah, that's not shouldn't be like that. We're going to do a bit of investigating here and see if we can find out what's actually gone wrong with this oh, gearbox. The, the snout's had it. Yeah, so they've. I'll tell you what, let's try and get right in on that. Guys, yeah. look at the state the of that. The snout is completely naked, isn't it? What's they caused that? Like, well, we've that's, the that last, yeah, that's the last. Yes, the last clutch. So it would have been just these three bolts and replace that snout, but this gearbox was jolting and oh, really yeah, whining. It's so now, it's it? had it. it. It can stay out. Yeah. Yeah, it's been replaced as well, hasn't it? Yeah. But the bit that was has been overlooked, hasn't it? You can't overlook that, mate. You just noticed it straight away. We do, though, don't we? Because you're having a look. Yeah, but we've done them before, haven't we? And do you think someone's assumed, oh, the clutch is gone? Yeah, that's right. That, it shouldn't, that shouldn't have that nice. that play that's in there, no. like that. That play should not be there. No. That should fit nicely and glide. But you can see it's getting caught on there as well. Well, at least we found the problem. And on the bench, we've got a nice new gearbox for it. So... Hopefully, get it all swapped out because it's a slightly different setup because it come out of a van, but we'll get all of the mount, etc., all swapped over. And then, do you know what, Chris? I think just roll with chucking that new box straight in there because mm. there ain't nothing wrong with that clutch, is there? No. Has it got a date on it? Mm. Guys, I'm going to let Chris have a good look through That's that and no. we'll decide what we're going to do. So I just went around the cat components, grabbed that new release bearing. And also while I was there, I grabbed a couple of new lower ball joints for it. They come with the bolts and obviously those last ones, somebody had put those bolts in, just didn't want to take any chances with them. So just bought two new ones. They come with the bolts, two litres of gearbox oil as well. And we got both gearboxes here on the bench just to make sure 
that it is everything's the same now this did come out of a van so you can see like this bolt in there is extra and our gearbox doesn't have that that was probably an earth but you can see it earths here so that's been swapped over um all of the mount etc here the the actual top mount for it that needed changing over also the selector gear needed changing as well so i think we're pretty much there with it i'm just going to wait till chris comes back in and we'll get that lifted in but you can see i mean i don't know if this is the original gearbox but it's definitely been rebuilt to some description because it's all been open and this one is out of that van that had done thirteen thousand miles I think Chris actually showed the engine recently in another video what what happened to it. It was a flood damaged one and it smashed the cylinder to pieces. So yeah, got that new bearing in there. Needs a little bit of grease on there and we'll be good to put this gearbox in. I'll need Chris to give me an hand, lift it up and get it in there because of course it is up on the ramp and it is a little bit awkward. But because we haven't had the clutch out, there shouldn't we're not going to need the alignment tool. So we should be able to get and get a couple of bolts in it. lovely job to do that guys and that's purely down to the fact that i lifted it up there chris slid it under and it just popped straight on no problems whatsoever managed to get two bell housing bolts in it straight away get it in position and then i went up the ladder put the two two bolts in up here on the gearbox mount and it's now sitting there it's just a case of building it all back up I am going to finish off underneath, I think. No, sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to bring it down and do all of the little bits on top, get the rest of the bellows in bolts, get all them cracked up, and then just continue putting it back together. Like I said earlier in this video, I don't want a time lapse all day stripping it out, putting it in, because there's no way I could set the camera up here and film it. It would take hours to do, but I am just going to carry on and get as much of this, well, get all of it back together and get this one finished get some nice new oil in there and hopefully it'll drive pretty nice too. Moving along very, very nicely and can't wait to actually see it completed now because we wasn't expecting to do this, was we? I've chucked the wheel on this side because we can crack these up with a crack bar and um, peen them over. You can see they're pretty much on the marks, a little tiny bit more. Peen those nuts over, so I'm going to do that. And then this side, I've got wheel arch liner to do exactly the same here. You can see that's got a little way to go yet. I've just filled up the gearbox, 1.7 litres, and it took all of it. So that's nice and full now. Pretty much wheel arch liner, tighten up all the nuts and bolts, and actually take it out for a drive. It all went back together very straightforward, and it was nice. Do you know, I'm going to say it. We did get lucky because it was quite devastating that we had to put a gearbox in it. It was like, oh, we really weren't expecting that. But, you know, we had the gearbox, so it hasn't cost us anything. And the most important thing is, how lucky was that to whip that gearbox out and it's already got a brand new clutch kit in it? That has saved us a few quid. So, ultimately, what has this cost us extra? A bit of time, definitely. As anyway, let's finish it off, get it all back together and get it out for a nice drive. And fingers crossed, this is a real, real nice car. I am going to change that as well. It just looks awful, doesn't it, up close? I mean, it, it doesn't look too bad on camera, but it really does. It actually looks like a wheels hit it, but then when you look here, you can see it's actually got water under it and it's just falling inside. So anyway, let's carry on and get this one completely back together. Is 
this the most salted 60 plate DS3 out there? I think it is now. Well, it's got, got to be close, hasn't it? That's quiet. Got a bit of wind noise. Fourth. Yeah, good, isn't it? Hopefully we can get in the fit. Very quiet now. That's a clutch it, feel. Yeah, it feels lovely. But I think we knew, didn't we? As yeah. soon as we see that, we knew. It's actually a really quiet engine as well. Hopefully we can get up to fifth here. It's actually a private road this, isn't it? Yeah. Fifth, lovely. Yeah. Good 50 job. mile an hour. Yeah. Oh well, that's nice. Mate, there's nothing wrong with that. And I said earlier on in the video, I know you was outside messing around with another car. This, um, we actually got lucky there with that clutch. It was a bit of a, a good comeback, wasn't it? Because ultimately we thought clutch, more expense on a oh, clutch yeah, yeah. and a gearbox, but luckily you had this gearbox. Uh, how many vans has that van actually repaired that oh. you bought? I think we repaired three other vans with it. Yeah. You originally repaired your van with That's it. That's right. And now we've just repaired this with it, so. Yeah. Yeah, mate. I'll, it, I've got no, no complaints. It's done a few miles, hasn't it? But I think once we, well, I guess we're going to crunch the numbers now, are we? Yeah. And, yeah. and see, yeah. Yeah, we go back. Well, we're so gonna, that's, it's a wrap then, isn't it? Yeah, we've got nothing more to do to it, have we? No. Am I going the wrong? Yeah, I'm going the wrong way, there, aren't I? You're. Don't even know my don't even know my way around, and I'm on my home ground. It's terrible. Right, let's get back to the yard then and crunch the numbers. Oh, it's a video late. But we got there in the end, didn't we? We finally got there in the end. Got the fire on in the background there. Loads of you do keep asking about that little tank there. That is just a, it's a oil burning tank that Chris has put up there in the background. So straight down to the numbers on the DS3. You might hear a little bit of Chris in the background because we was just starting another video and he's still got his mic on, yet he's putting all his tools away. Purchase price of that car I revealed in the last video was actually only £400. But like with any car that we do get offered, if it comes through a third party, of course, we'll give, try to give them a finder's fee. Uh, quite recently, we've had a few come through on Instagram. Still getting quite a lot of Facebook links. Just to, I know we've got quite a few new subscribers. Just to reiterate there, we haven't actually got a Facebook account and we're not associated with any Facebook account. So those links are wasted on us guys, sending them to us. They, we can't do anything with them. But don't forget when you do message me on Instagram, please put your telephone number on there. So purchase price was £400. Delivery, and of course we included a finder's fee, £250. Now this bit is really interesting because when we did my van, it was actually over £100 more. But I've done a bit of research. The company sell loads all over the, all over eBay, and they're actually only in Essex. And when I turned up there, I didn't realise it was the same company that we actually used to buy the big end shells for the Land Rover Discovery, wasn't it? Yes, that's I, correct. Just off the top of your head, Chris, that receipt for that can belt water pump and all that. I don't suppose you could put your hands on that. I've not seen it. Have you not? No. I, I did put it with the receipts. Yeah. It was just I wanted to say the name of the company just in case anyone I'll else. Have a, I'll have a look. I didn't. I actually got that off the bank statement. That for us. Oh yeah, don't don't panic then, mate. I've only recently put it in there. Um, yeah. So the gasket, uh, the crank camshaft. I will get it right. The camshaft, timing belt, water pump, followers, rockers, was two hundred and twenty pound. And that, I think that was really, really good. Like I say, over a hundred pound saving on the Bolingo, the last one we done. So oil and filters was forty-seven pound thirty-eight. Auxiliary belt was twenty-three pound seventeen p. The release bearing I went and got yesterday was seventeen pound fifty-eight. And of course, the two bottom ball joints were twenty-eight pound eighty for both of them. So very, very cheap, fourteen pound forty each. Two litres of gear oil was £17.14p. MOT, £40. Apex Auto Parts. Apex Auto Parts are in Essex. If you type that in eBay, they'll come straight up, guys, if you do need to use them. 
They, I think they only sell engine components. They don't sell anything else. Uh, yeah, forty pound for the MOT, and the valet. Oh, like I said, I was embarrassed to take it down there. Me and Chris cleaned out a lot, but it was still disgusting inside. So after he finished cleaning it, I actually gave him £40. And I thought, I deserved every penny of that £40, didn't I? Yeah, definitely. It was gross. Logbook. Now, we had to apply for one. You have to fill out a V62. I don't know about anyone else, but I personally haven't got a checkbook anymore. And we haven't got a checkbook between us, so I had to get a postal order to put in there with it. And the cost of a £25 postal order was about £28. So it came to £30 with a postage. We have got a total price for that car of £1,114.7p. I was a bit worried when we drove it and the gearbox was knackered, but we're lucky we didn't have to buy a clutch kit for it, aren't we? Retail on that car, we just me and Chris just flicked through, 3,400 to 3,900. But of course, we always leave enough in it for the next van, don't we? We're going to ask trade money for it, two and a half grand, which is going to give us a pre-tax profit, a healthy pre-tax profit, may I add, 1,385 pound 93p. Was that little DS3 worth doing? We're Absolutely. Happy. We're happy with that. Aren't we, we are very happy with that because we bought that car a long time ago, but the guy was waiting for the logbook before he went and collected the car. And then in the end, I just said, you know what? Just go and collect it and we'll have it without the logbook. So quite a lot of you also have mentioned about the number plate. Is the number plate sell? Are you going to sell it? Are you taking it off the car? Well, we have actually received an offer for that number plate of, I, I won't even say the figure yet, or shall I? Well, We've been offered 500 quid for the number plate. And depending on time frame, really, when the uh, logbook comes back, we've then got to go online, remove the number plate, wait for the new logbook to come. So it just kind of depends how it pans out. I'm quite happy with the profit we've made. And like you just heard Chris say in the background there, we're, we're both really happy with it. So... If it comes to selling it with a number plate, we'll probably sell it. <coughs> it's a shame, really, because that car is still showing as taxed, and we've put a year's MOT on it. So we could actually sell it now as it is, and the new owner waits for the logbook. But unfortunately, there will be a stage where DVLA remove that owner from the V5, then there'll be a period of time before it, the new V5 gets delivered. So I wouldn't really want to sell it to someone that they're going to drive it around then all of a sudden it's going to be untaxed and there is a chance that car could be taken off them where it's not going to be taxed for a few days waiting for a V5. Anyway, I'm sure that does make sense to quite a lot of you. For those that it didn't make sense to, I'll try and explain it a bit more proper next time. But if you did enjoy the video, please do hit that thumbs up. Of course, share it on all your social networking sites. We really do appreciate Thanks for it. Thanks the coffees, Rob. Oh yeah, and thank you to everyone that used the link, buy me a coffee. Absolutely blown yeah, away there. Yeah, yeah. And we got enough coffee to keep the scan for the next couple we of certainly weeks. Have. Yeah, yeah, we so certainly have. Thank you everybody for that. We we really do appreciate it. And of course the link's in the description for anyone that does want to buy us a coffee. Uh, anything else to add? I think that's it, Rob. Pretty much covered everything. I think so. Really, really important. Please include your phone number on Instagram. I know I keep saying it. And of course, our Instagram is Selvage Rebuilds. Chris's Instagram is Selvage Rebuilds Chris. That's it. Did I get that run the right way? You did. For the first time ever. <laughs> we'll see you all very, very soon in the next one.